بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته math grade 9 algebra 1 we are in model 4 linear and non-linear functions today we have lesson 6 piecewise and steep functions piecewise and steep functions at the beginning I want to show you some videos about this lesson Hi, this is Mr. Rutherford. In this problem, we will learn to graph a piecewise defined function. As you see here, we have this example graph fx and the function here, we have two uh, the divisionals or two, dif uh, or two divisions. So here we have 1 over 2x plus 3 fx greater or equal negative 2. And here we have negative x, negative 5, if x less than negative 2. So we want to state the domain and the range. Graph f of x equals 1 half x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to negative 2, negative x minus 5 if x is less than negative 2. State the domain and range. So in this problem, we have a piecewise defined function. So we need to first graph the 1 half x plus 3 when x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Notice in slope-intercept form that we'd have a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept of 3, so we can use that to graph. So I'm going to start with plotting my y-intercept of 3. So I'll go up 3 from the origin and plot my y-intercept. Next, we have a slope of 1 half which is a rise of 1 and a run of 2. So I'll go up 1 and to the right 2. And I'll do that a couple times. I can also go back to the y-intercept and go down 1, and this time go to the left 2. Now notice here we have x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So as I move to the left to negative 2, this particular function cannot be less than negative 2, but it can be equal to negative 2. So this will be a solid dot here. So when I construct my line, I will not continue the line as I would in a y equals mx plus b linear function, but I will start at the negative 2 and continue to the right, like so. And be sure to put your arrow on the end. Next, we'll graph our second part to our piecewise function, which is defined by negative x minus 5 if x is less than negative 2. Notice here we have a slope of negative 1, and we have a y-intercept of negative 5. If you notice our graph here, our y values below the x-axis only go to negative 4. So therefore, we can improvise by making an input-output table also referred to as a t-chart. And we can pick some values for x to substitute back into our function. So let's pick values such as negative 4, negative 3, and negative 2. And substitute those into our function. So if we substitute negative 4 into our function, we'll have negative, negative 4, minus 5. This will become a positive 4 minus 5, which equals negative 1. So we have an ordered pair of negative 4, negative 1. Next, I'll substitute negative 3 into the function. So we have negative, negative 3, minus 5. Negative, negative 3 is a positive 3. So we have 3 minus 5, which equals negative 2. So our ordered pair here will be negative 3, negative 2. Finally, let's substitute the negative 2. So we'll have negative, negative 2, minus 5. Negative, negative 2 is a positive 2. So we have 2 minus 5, which equals negative 3. So our ordered pair here is negative 2, negative 3. So let's plot these points. So negative 4, negative 1 will be to the left 
four units and down one unit. Then we have negative three, negative two to the left, three units and down two units. And finally, negative two to the left, two units and down three units. Now before we make our line here, notice that we have x is less than negative two. Because it is less than, that means that this, our piecewise function of negative x minus five, the second part to our piecewise function, cannot include this number negative two. So I need to change this to an open circle to indicate that. So on the negative two, I'll put an open circle, and now we can draw or construct our line. So I'll connect here that with the other points. And again, I'll put an arrow at the end. Finally, we need to state the domain and range. Notice if we look at our graph, the domain here is going to be all real numbers. However, with the range, notice that with our graph, we notice that our y's values do not go below negative 3. So the range in this case is going to be all numbers that are greater than negative 3. So as you see in this video, uh, we want to graph the first function and the second function. The first fun function, as you see, uh, this is a linear equation. Uh, the slope will be 1 over 2. As you remember, the slope rise over run. Rise means the change in the y, and run means the change in the x. And here the y-intercept, the construction point between the y-axis and the x-axis. So we will st start from uh, to represent the 3 in the y-axis. This is the 3. Then, 1 means rise, so so go one unit up. Then 2 means the run, means go two units to the left. You will get this, uh, the second point. Then you can match between the two points here. You will get the line. But as you see here, x greater than or equal negative 2 means start from the values of x start from negative 2, then go up, then go up. So we can represent any uh, two points. Uh, for example, here, if you uh, choose here, negative 2, negative 2 times 1 will be negative 2, negative 2 divided by negative 2 will be negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 will be 2. So we can, this is negative 2x and 2 in y, this is the, the beginning point. Because x equal negative 2, we put here the point solve point. In the next function, we can use table. Represent x and y. Not here, x less than less than negative 2. Means the value of x start from negative 3 and down. So you gotta choose the values less than negative two. Like exa for example, negative four, negative three, and take negative two, but negative two not include in this function because X less than negative two. Then substitute the value in the function. If we choose the value of X negative four, negative four, and we have here negative B four, negative, negative will be positive. And here we have negative five, 4, negative 5 means negative 1. So the first, first point, negative 4, negative 1. Negative 4, negative 1, the first point will be here. Then choose the value of x, negative 3. Substitute here negative 3. So negative times negative 3, negative 5. Then negative times negative will be positive. 3, negative 5 will be negative 2. So the second point will be negative 3, uh, negative 2. The second point will be here. Then if you substitute the value of x negative 2, negative negative 2, 
negative 5. Negative, negative 2 means 2 minus 5 will be negative 3. So the, the third point, negative 2 here and negative 3 here. But here, put open circle. Why, why put open circle? Because negative 2 not include in this function. Why? Because x less than negative 2 doesn't equal negative 2, less than negative 2. So put in this value at this point, put here open circle. So when you put salt circle, means this point include in the function. And when you put open circle, means this not include in the function. Then we want to uh, determine the domain and the range. Always here, the domain, all real numbers, all values, the all values. So the value of X, the all values, but the range. As you see here, this is the lowest value in the Y axis, but not include, but not include negative three. This is the lowest value, means the all values up negative three, this is the, 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 the range. So we can write Y means all values greater than, greater than negative three, greater than negative three. The second idea in this video, Hello, this is Mrs. Hyman. Graph f of x equals greatest integer of x plus 3. State the domain and range. Well, this notation right here is the greatest integer. So this is a greatest integer function. And it's, it's a type of a step function. And when we graph it, we can see why it's called a step function. When you see any number between the two signs here, the mean of this sample greatest integer, greatest integer. And what the greatest integer means is that, first of all, we're going to put in values for x. And the greatest integer means that we're going to, to take the greatest integer, the largest integer, that isn't more than that number that we put in for x. So let's choose some values for x and we'll see how that works. So let's take a couple of negative values first. So how about negative 0 0.5 and negative 1. And then we'll use 0, 0 0.25. 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.25, and 1.5. Okay, so those are the values that we have for x. Now let's see what happens when we put them in into this greatest integer function. Well, if we put in negative 0.5, the largest integer that is not more than negative 0.5 0.5 would be negative 1. Now we're going to take that value, the, the negative 1, and we're going to add 3 to it. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Okay, now we're going to put negative 1 into that greatest integer function, and negative 1 is an integer. So that remains negative 1. And now we add 3 to that, and again we get 2. Okay, now let's try 0. Well, again, 0 is an integer, so when we plug that into this greatest integer function, 0 is the largest integer that's not any more than 0. And we'll add 3 to that, so 0 plus 3 gives us 3. Okay, now next we have 0 0.25. And we'll plug that into the greatest integer function. And so the largest integer that's not more than 0.25 is only 0. And then 0 plus 3, again, we get 3. All right, our next value, 0 0.5. Again, we'll plug that in. And the largest integer that isn't more than 0 0.5 is going to be 0 again, adding 3 we get 3. 
Okay, our next value is 1. 1, again, is an integer. So when we plug that into the greatest integer function, we get 1 out. And then we add 3 to that. So we have 4 now. And 1.25. We'll place that into the greatest integer function. And the largest integer that isn't any more than 1.25 is just 1. And 1 plus 3 gives us 4. We'll try one more value, 1.5, plug it into our greatest integer function, and so the largest integer that's not more than 1.5 is 1, and 1 plus 3 again gives us 4. So we can see some repeated values here in our function, even though we put different values in for x. So let's go try to graph that. So we see here that we have negative 0.5 for x, and our function value is 2. So negative 0.5 for x, and we're going to go up 2. That's right here. And at negative 1 for x, we also go up to 2. Okay, now let's try 0. If we put in 0, we get 3. So at 0, we can see it's going to hop up here to 3. And so what happens is we connect these, we get to 0, we have to put an open circle because we hopped up here. Okay, so our value, because of the greatest integer function, we're now at 0, is up at 3 for y. Now we'll put our next point on, 0 0.25 and 3. So 0.25 again is at 3 and 0 0.5 is up at 3. So we have those points and when we get to 1 for x what we get out of our function is 4. So at 1 it hops up here to 4. So again we're going to connect these points. All these will round and when we get to 1 for x, we're going up, we're stepping up to our next value. Okay, now 1.25, again we get 4 out for y. So here's 1.25, come up to 4. And at 1.5 for x, we get 4 out for y. So we'll put that value up here. We'll connect those. And the same thing's going to happen. We're going to have an open circle here because when we get to 2, it's going to step up. Okay, this pattern is going to continue with this open circle on the right and a closed circle or a point including on the left. And again, it's going to step down here. And we have that same pattern just continues. And so now you can see why it's called a step function, because it looks like little stair steps going up. So we have graphed the function. Now the second part asks us to state the domain and the range. Well, the domain, remember, is the x values. So if we take a look first of all at our table, you can see we use some negative values, we use some positive values, we use zero, we had some decimals in there. And again, looking at the graph, we can see that we have, we have all values of x. We have negatives, positives, zeros, and everything in between. So our domain would be all real numbers. Okay, and then the range is the y values. And if we take a look here, since we're taking those steps up every time, this in between is not included in our graph. So we don't have all real numbers. We can see that our y values are only on integers. They're on negative integers, they're at zero, and they're on positive integers. So our range 
is all integers. This graph, the f of x equals the greatest integer of x plus 3, is a translation of the graph f of x equals greatest integer of x translated three units to the left. So in this, this example, we have this function fx equal greatest integer of x plus three. And the greatest integers means the greatest value for x, but not greater than the value of x. So we want to state, to graph them to state the domain and the range. At the first, we can create this table, include the three columns, the first column x, the second column, the greatest integer of x, then the function here, fx, greatest common x, the greatest uh, integer x plus three. Here you can choose any values, it's up to you. For example, here in this example, we have negative 0 0.5, negative 1, 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5. Now, how to find the value of f, fx? In the second column here, the, in, the greatest integer, go to the negative 0 0.5. We have this is the greatest value of x, but this is not integers. What is the greatest value, value of integer nearest to the negative 0 0.5, but not greater than 0 0.5? Will be negative 1. The nearest value of integers nearest to the 0 0.5, but not greater than negative 0 0.5 will be what? Will be negative 1. So take negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 will be 2. So the first, the first point will be negative 0 0.5 in x and 2 in y will be here. The first point will be here. Then, the value of x negative 1. What is the greatest integer? Will be negative 1 because negative 1 integer. So negative 1 plus 3 will be 2. So negative 1 in x and 2 in y, the point will be here. When you have the value of x 0, 0 integers. So the greatest integers nearest to the 0 will be 0. 0 plus 3 will be 3. So the point will be 0, 3 will be here. Then, then 0 0.25, this is decimal, not integers. What is the greatest integers nearest to the 0 0.25, but not, not greater than 0 0.25 will be 0. 0 plus 3 will be 3. So we have also the same point. 0, 3, 0, 3. The same ideas here. We have here uh, 0 0.5, 3, 1, 4, 1.5, 4, 1.5, 4. So we can represent the all uh, points. And the open circle means the value not include in this function. The salt function means include. How does the, 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 the determine the domain and the range? Uh, as you see, the domain means the values in the x-axis. We have all values include in this function, it means all real numbers, all real numbers. How to determine the range? The range means the y values, the y values. As you see here in the y-axis, we have negative and positive integers means we have the all integers we have the all integers the third idea and the last idea in this lesson hi this is mr rutherford painting a painter charges 15 dollars per half hour 
or any fraction of a half hour. Draw a graph that represents this situation. So in this problem here we have a function table. We have x and f of x. Then here we have a graph. Now in this case, we have the total cost for extra minutes that will be multiples of $15. And in this case, the graph is going to be a step function because if, for instance, we have x, which is greater than zero hours or less than or equal to half an hour, the cost in this case is going to be $15. So we could have a person that works less than half an hour, but yet a person is still charged $15 for that work of painting. So then if we went from half an hour to an hour, the charge then in this case would be 30 because we have two half an hours. So as soon as the painter goes over half an hour, they're charged for one hour of painting. So then we'll go ahead and just list some of the different possibilities we have. So we'll have X then is greater than one hour and less than or equal to one and a half hours. So the charge here would be 45. So it's going up in increments of $15. Then we'll have X is greater than one and a half hours and less than or equal to two hours. And the charge here would be 60. Then we can say X is greater than two hours and less than or equal to two and a half hours. The charge then would be 75. Then we can say X is greater than two and a half hours and less than or equal to three hours. And the charge here would be 90. And finally, we'll do one more. X is greater than three hours and less than or equal to three and a half. And the charge here would be 105. So let's go ahead and graph this. And again, we said this is going to be a step function. So again, the reason it's a step function is because this painter is going to charge only multiples of $15, nothing in between, regardless of the amount of time, whether it's a fraction of a half an hour or not. So here we have to start it from zero to half an hour. The charge is $15. The circle is going to be open on zero and closed on half an hour. Because notice we have x is greater than zero. The greater is going to give us an open circle and less than or equal to 0.5 or half an hour. The less than or equal to gives us a closed circle. Then we step up to the next one and we have from half an hour or greater than half an hour up to and including one hour will be $30. Then greater than one hour and up to and including one and a half hours is 45. And we'll continue in the same fashion. So one and a half hours is and above is $60. This is an open circle here. So we have Above two hours and up to two and a half is $75. More than two hours and up to two and a half hours is $90. And finally, above three hours or more than three hours and up to three and a half hours is $105. So now you've learned to graph a step function. So as you see in this uh, example, we have a uh, word problem here. A painter charges $15 per half hour. Half hour means 0 0.5 hour. So the values of X means here will be greater than zero and less than or equal 0 0.5 hours. Will be charges $15. Then we can continue in the same function of this function. Add 0 0.5 to the two sides. 0 plus 0 0.5 will be 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 will be 1. 
and here add 15. 15 plus 15 will be 30. Then here add 0 0.5, add 0 0.5 will be here 1, and here 1.5, and 30 plus 15 will be 45. Etc. You will get now the value of x, and if x means the value of y. So here, x greater than 0. So start from 0 and less than 0 0.5. Between 0 and 0 0.5, the charge will be 15. The charge will be 15. But in the 0, x greater than 0 means not include 0. Means put here open circle. And less than or equal, equal, we have here equal 0 0.5. Means 0 0.5 include in the values of x. So means put here solve point. Then the second column here, the second row here, we have <coughs> 0 0.5, but x greater than 0 0.5. So from 0 0.5 to the 1, from 0 0.5 to the 1. 0 0.5 would here open circle y because not include in the value of x and here we have equal equal one so put here solve point and etc to get the last point here who has any question about this ideas are all ideas clear for all Do you have any question, guards? No. No. Sure. OK. So this is our lesson uh, for today. Thank you for your listening. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. See you, inshallah, in the next Monday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.